Recently, I've introduced several open source models. For example, the CREA model, which inherits the entire Flux ecosystem, features extensive control net support and a vast selection of LoRa models. Another is WAN 2.2, which is far ahead in the video generation field and also excels at generating cinematic images. Today we'll talk about Quen Image, Alibaba's latest open source image generation model, renowned as a text rendering creative powerhouse. I've used it to create posters, PPT slides, and illustrations. Not only does it render text precisely, but its designs also have a strong sense of style, making it a savior for working professionals. In this video, we'll fully cover how to use the model, including selecting different model formats, running it in Comfy UI, configuring parameters, acceleration, and upscaling solutions, as well as practical applications of LoRa, ControlNet. We'll finish with a summary of Quen Image's strengths and limitations. Let's get started. This time, there are quite a few model types, in addition to the official original, FP8, and GGUF formats. There's a distilled version provided by Dissent Studio, and Nunchaku offers both our 128 and our 32 options. You can first check out the demonstrations later in this guide to decide which version you'd like to download. All versions of the model should be placed in the diffusion underscore models folder. Pay attention to the clip and VAE. They are using Quen underscore 2.5 underscore VL underscore 7B and Quen VAE. Open Comfy UI. I'm using version 0.3.52. The interface has some changes compared to previous releases. For example, the workflow, template library, and logs are now in the sidebar, making them easier to access. Click to open the template library, go to the image section. The first few are workflows for the Quen series. Let's start with the first text to image workflow. Close the model download pop-up. As a quick remark, clicking download here only calls your browser to fetch the file. It doesn't automatically place it in the designated folder, so there is room for improvement. Set both the model and clip in the workflow to my local FP8 format. Unlike WAN 2.2, QuenImage's FP8 format delivers good results, we'll compare other formats shortly. I also updated the image size and prompt, locked in a favorite number as the seed, and clicked Run. After waiting 3 minutes for sampling, a perfect poster is generated. Let's compare the output to the prompt to check the result. The top headline is indeed the Chinese words we want, and the English subheading, spring outing, is correct. In the colorful rounded box in the center, all the slogans are accurate. The highlights section includes all six bullet points with a total of 24 characters, every word correct. Even the date and venue at the bottom are properly centered in two lines. Creating posters like this is incredibly easy. I've been generating posters at high volume over the past few days, and as long as I use this prompt style, the text and layout are generally spot on. Occasionally, you might get a typo or a stray quotation mark, but switching random seeds a few times usually solves it. Just now, I used the FP8 model. If we switch to the original BF16 model and clip, the visual result is similar, but the speed is significantly slower. Quen Image also offers a distilled model which generates images with fewer steps. Switching to the FP8 distilled model, you'll need to adjust parameters, lower the steps to 10 and CFG to 1. This time, it takes less than a minute. The image output is a bit different, but overall quality is fine, and the text is flawless. Many users prefer the GGUF model, since theoretically, the Q8 variant delivers results close to the original. Don't forget, if you use GGUF, you need to update your Comfy UI GGUF plugin, or you'll run into an error. The previous parameters were for the distilled model, so you need to reset both steps and CFG to their default. This run took over 10 minutes, but that's because I was recording the process. Under normal circumstances, generating an image at this size only requires about 100 seconds. If speed is your priority, the Nunchaku model is essential but updating the Nunchaku plugin this time is a bit tricky. Supporting Quen Image required a big leap in the plugin version, from version 0.3.3 straight to version 1.0.0, and you also need to upgrade the Nunchaku library to version 1.0.0. Currently, the dependency installation node provided by the Nunchaku plugin has a bug. It tries to download the wheel file from an incorrect URL, so the process fails. If you're not in a rush, you might want to wait for a fix. However, manual installation is straightforward. 
Check your Python and Torch versions from the Comfy UI interface or startup logs, then download the suitable file from the official website and install it using the provided command. Nunchaku offers two model ranks this time, SVD quant quantized versions at rank 128 and 32. A higher rank, e.g. 128, preserves more information and so offers better quality, but inference will be slower. Since speed isn't my main concern, I chose the R128 version. The Nunchaku model uses the same parameters as the standard model, just run as usual. This poster shows subtle differences, but it's still high quality, with all the text and layout correct. Sampling took 50 seconds. With the R32 model, it drops to 40 seconds, and the final result looks like this. Just like WAN 2.2, Lights 2V offers quick LoRa for 4-step and 8-step acceleration with both 1.0 and 1.1 versions. In my tests, the 8-step 1.1 model offers the best value. Switch back to FP8, enable the LoRa loading node, select the desired model. Set steps to 8, CFG to 1, and click Run. After 37 seconds of sampling, we get this poster, although there's a minor flaw in the character high, the overall value is excellent. You might have noticed that we've been using Chinese prompts throughout, since Quenimage interprets Chinese prompts with high accuracy, and results meet expectations. Does this mean you can't use English prompts? Do international users need to translate prompts into Chinese? In reality, for poster generation, the difference between Chinese and English prompts isn't significant. Now let's switch the model and parameters back to FP8 and replace the prompt with a similar English version. Run it directly. The generated poster's content and quality are basically normal, the details are solid. With a careful eye, I spotted a minor issue, what should be a dot turned into an end symbol. However, for everyday scenes, Chinese prompts yield better results, as shown in my previous comparisons. I have a translation node in Mia nodes for translating English to Chinese, so let me quickly demonstrate, search for the translator node, which requires a large language API platform as input. You can use DeepSeq, Gemini, SiliconFlow, Jipu, etc. Most platforms have a free tier. Paste in the English prompt, click Run, and you'll see the translated result. However, for poster generation, this approach isn't ideal, since the text you want to display also gets translated, for example, after translating from English to Chinese and back, the location name changed from Sunshine Flower Sea Park to Sunshine Flower Garden Park. Overall, the output is still good, one character, a word zoo was missing, a rerun might fix it, but I won't sample again here. Remove the translation node, switch the prompt back to Chinese, and let's check the parameters. First, sampling steps. When using Lights 2V Acceleration LoRa, set steps according to LoRa's requirements, 4 steps for 4 step, 8 for 8 step, and 10 for distilled models. Comfy UI suggests only 20 steps for FP8 models, but notes that Quen officials recommend 40 steps. What's the difference? Let me try with 40 steps. Comparing two images. There are more details in the 40-step output, like the boy's pants, the rabbit's leg movement, and small light strings on the umbrella. Doubling the steps means doubling the time, do you think it's worth it? The default sampling method is Euler with simple, however, there are several other combinations. I personally prefer res underscore multi-step with beta. Set steps back to 20, switch to these methods, and run. Theoretically, this combination gives slightly better quality, but it's a bit slower. You can freely choose based on your needs. For demonstration, I'll switch back for now. Sometimes, we need square images. Quen image works well at these resolutions. Let's try 1328 by 1328. Change the prompt to something simple. A cartoon cat sunbathing on the beach, with a handwritten lyric in the upper left corner. Click run and wait patiently. There we go, a cute little kitten appears. Of course, the model doesn't have to use only these resolutions. With 512 by 512 or 1024 by 1024 and the same prompt, you'll get results like this. However, if you want higher resolutions, 
it's not recommended to generate them directly. Usually, we append a high-resolution upscaling workflow. First, use an image upscaling model such as 4x UltraSharp to upscale the generated image by 4x, then use Lanxos to downscale by 0.5. This effectively results in a 2x upscaling. Next, use the base model to perform low denoise regeneration. Typically, I set the denoising strength to 0.2 and run it for 10 steps. Run it. Oops, wasted effort. The denoising strength was still set to 1.0, which means it's essentially starting from scratch with text to image generation. But this perfectly demonstrates what I mentioned earlier. Don't generate high res images directly. Not only is the entire image blurred, but the text that's supposed to appear in the upper left, as specified in your prompt, ends up misplaced. Set denoising strength to 0.2 and run again. This time it works, resulting in a 2656 by 2656 high res image. When adding a second sampling stage for high res upscaling in your workflow, using Lights 2V to accelerate LoRa offers outstanding value. Let's enable it and tweak the parameters for both sampling nodes. Set CFG to 1, steps to 8 and 4. This allows us to generate a 2K image at much faster speeds. This workflow doesn't force you to use the base model for upscaling. Some users may prefer to use 1.2 for the second sampling stage. Its lighting and details are indeed superior, but there's a high chance the text in your poster will be distorted. I recommend only using it for scenes without text. When I first used Quen Image, I generated these Zaya Hongshu style selfies with prompts like this. Let's run it and take a look. It's got a strong everyday vibe. However, some users might say, this image has a strong Dobao feel dot. If you use the same prompt in Dobao, you get something very similar. They're likely using similar training datasets. Don't forget Quen Image's unique advantages. Try adding some text. For example, with this prompt, you get results like this. Isn't it perfect for me making or emoji packs? In the past year, quite a few open source image generation models have emerged, but many are short lived. I won't name names here, but the main reason is generally a lack of community and ecosystem support. In contrast, Quen Image may not have the early advantage of models like Crea, but with its open license and low training difficulty, it has sparked strong community enthusiasm and rapid ecosystem development, including several NSFW projects. Let me demo a few useful LORAS. Load a flat color LoRa. It focuses on removing redundant details and represents images with large areas of pure color and simple lines. I'll use the prompt recommended by the author. It mixes English descriptions with Chinese text, but full Chinese works too. Running it produces this image, very suitable as illustration for a public article. AW Portrait is another LoRa I frequently use. It generates portraits in various styles. I'll switch LORAS and modify the prompt and parameters as the author suggests. Run again. The result looks completely different from the model's default Dobao face. For any image generation model, control net is essential. Accurate control turns random image generation into a true productivity tool. Quen Image supports three distinct control net solutions, Instant X, Union, and Patch. Feeling confused? Let's look at them one by one. Starting with Union, released by Diffsense Studio, used as a LoRa. It employs the in-context technique and supports multiple conditions, canny, depth, line art, soft edge, normal, and open pose. It's lightweight and user-friendly. Set all workflow models to local, and select Union LoRa in the LoRa loading node. Upload a photo of a woman in a leather jacket. Here's an uncommon node. It scales the image to a fixed pixel count while maintaining proportions. For example, setting to 1 megapixel will resize the image to 1024 by 1024. Note that this control net does not require you to manually select a type, it automatically matches based on your reference image. The default workflow uses a native node for canny preprocessing, but I prefer a professional control net preprocessing plugin. Add an all in one preprocessor node and replace the original one. Compared with Canny, I find depth more practical. Set depth anything v2, change resolution to 1024, and switch the prompt to steampunk style. Click run. 
The depth map comes out first, showing strong layer separation, hair contours are very clear. Comparing the original image, depth map, and final output, the consistency is evident. Now let's use the patch version of ControlNet. Also released by Diffsense Studio, but modifies the original Quen image model via patched files. It offers even stronger control signals, making it ideal for high precision tasks. There are three patches, Canny, Depth, and In Paint, each with targeted optimizations. Load the model, use the same reference image, preprocessor, prompt, and sampling parameters. Here's the final result, what do you think? The last control net model comes from InstantX. They've trained control net models for SD3 and Flux, among others. This is the most traditional kind of control net. You can see from the workflow that it uses the load control net model node. It also provides a union model, supporting canny, lines, soft edge, depth, and post controls. This workflow template contains a subgraph node, the latest Comfy UI feature, which is a series of nodes functioning as a subworkflow. Click here to unpack it and enter. If no nodes appear, use the thumbnail navigation in the bottom right. This subworkflow generates a depth map using Lotus. Then, use the tab in the lower left to return to the main workflow. Adjust the input and preprocessor to match the previous setup, and click Run. The final result is impressive. Theoretically, for the same function, Patch delivers the strongest control, InstantX next, and LoRa is the weakest. But in terms of user-friendliness, it's the reverse, LoRa is the lightest, InstantX is a single large union model, and Patch requires downloading multiple different model files. If you need a specific feature, like in Paint, Patch is your only option, choose the model that best fits your actual needs. That's all for the demonstration. You should now be familiar with Quen Image's features and usage. To summarize, Quen Image currently offers the most accurate text rendering, exceptional layout design, and high prompt adherence among open source image generation models, perfect for posters, memes, and more. It's not limited to English, it understands Chinese prompts and can generate Chinese, Japanese, and other content. Its ecosystem is thriving, with comprehensive LoRa and ControlNet support, making it unlikely to fade away. It's also compatible with the native Quen Image Edit model more in the next session, allowing it to serve as a productivity tool in various scenarios. Downsides, large model size, speed isn't optimal, and faces tend to have a dobal look, but most of these can be mitigated with quantization or LoRa models. In realistic imagery, such as landscapes and portraits, especially regarding visual quality, lighting, and detail dynamics, it doesn't match Crea or 1.2.2. I recommend downloading multiple different models and choosing the best one for each scenario, play to their strengths. That's it for today's tutorial. You'll find the models, plugins, and workflows in the description below. Feel free to grab them if you're interested. See you next time.